hello, hello, and welcome to another Bible study with the Feed My Sheep Foundation video channel. Uh, today we're going to continue our Bible study in the book of 2 Chronicles, uh, and we're on chapter 6. And if you have been along with us, uh, you know that we're at the place where Solomon, well, I'll say where they're talking about Solomon and how he had built the house of the Lord for God as he did prophesy God prophesied that uh, Solomon would be building it and so in this chapter we're looking at the prophecy being fulfilled because the house has been built and there's a dedication unto the Lord regarding it and uh, just more pertaining to the house being established and then the fact that because it has been built and it's laid and they're ready to go in they went inside and I'm going to go ahead and start reading this story was originally taken from, I think it's Samuel, bits and pieces, I'm saying, were taken from the book of Samuel. Okay, so it's a pretty long chapter, but they're going into the dedication of the house of the Lord, and uh, now that the house has been built, the congregation is coming in, and it's very uh, delightful in what they're doing as far as the house. So, uh, chapter 6, 2 Chronicles, starts with David, say, or Solomon said, the Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. He would dwell in the thick darkness. But I have built a house of habitation for him, and a place for his dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel, they stood up. Oh, hallelujah. And again, some of this is taken out of 2 Samuel also. <clears throat> And they all stood up, the congregation, all the congregation of Israel stood up, and he said, this is what Solomon said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has, with his hands, fulfilled that which he spoke with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house, that in my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, For as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well, and that it was in your heart for, you know, to build a house. That was a beautiful thing, God is saying. But nevertheless... Thou shalt not build the house. Thy son, which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house in my name. Then it goes on to say, The Lord therefore hath uh, performed his word, that he has spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David, my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord, God of Israel. Hallelujah. So here we look at... a prophecy being fulfilled because we know that in the book of Samuel God told David that uh, his son, he was going to birth a son that would build him a house and here we have it in going over in Bible study that the house was built and the dedication was done and then he goes on to say uh, and, it, and in it have I put the ark wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel okay so here we have it, the covenant of the ark. And in that day, the covenant of the ark represented the promise, as we can see here, as it represented heaven and God, and, the, and uh, just showing uh, something of, uh, that the children of Israel could actually see, that the promise was made to them as a reminder that God has made them a promise. Whereas today, we have the covenant and we have the Holy Spirit within us to remind us that God has made a covenant. He has made a promise and he's given us, uh, based on that promise and that covenant, he's given us as the down payment, the earnest, he said the highest of the, the covenant would be the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so that is the, the new, that is of the new covenant. And stated right here, this was of the old covenant in the Old Testament, whenever the house of the Lord was being built by Solomon, and the uh, it's like the Old Testament values were in place. Okay, 
So it goes on to say that he stood there uh, at the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. For Solomon had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high. And he had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven. So he lifted up his hands unto heaven, did the dedication unto the heavenly father. And he said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven, nor in the earth which keeps covenant and shows mercy unto thy servants that walk before thee with all their hearts. For thou which has kept with thy servant David, my father, that thou which thou hast promised him. So he said that he kept his promise and the fact that Solomon would be building him a house. And so he said and spoke with thy, he spoke it out of his mouth and he says, Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep thy servant David my father that which thou hast promised him saying there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Israel so he's petitioning God to help him to not fail basically and I, and I, and I truly agree with him on that you know because he doesn't want to disappoint God although he did do some disappointing things but nevertheless he's still King Solomon and he was the baddest one of the baddest I'll say over in the Old Testament and um, so he made he asked the Lord. He said, "Yet so that my children, so that thy children take heed of their way to walk in my law, as thou hast walked before me." Okay. And then he says, "Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth?" Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built. You know, and that's for real. How, you know, because again, the Holy Spirit is so powerful. You, when you, uh, when you, of course you experience it if you are in the kingdom of God. But when you experience the Holy Spirit and it's the presence of the Holy Spirit and how powerful uh, it feels just to be in God's presence and you come out of his presence but you don't walk in his presence 24 7 i mean you walk with the holy spirit we walk with the holy spirit but to uh encamp in his presence and that's what he's talking about right here you know how god is so big how can he just rest in that house but he says verse 19 he says have respect therefore to the prayer of thy servant because this is a prayer he's saying to him and to his supplication O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prays before you, that thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prays toward this place. So this is a prayer, a very long prayer too Solomon is making as the dedication unto the house of the Lord that he's built because he wants to make sure that God is of course he already is with him because he told him to build it and then he also provided made provision for it so he's definitely going to um, have his spirit in it and, but he's still petitioning God he says hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people Israel which they shall make toward this place hear thou from thy dwelling place even from heaven and when thou hears please forgive I put the please in there but he said forgive Okay, and if a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear, and in the oath come before thine altar in his house, then hear thou from heaven, and do, and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his way upon his own head, and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if thy people Israel put to the worst before the enemy, because they have sinned against you and shall return and confess thy name and pray and make supplication before thee in this house. So here he's establishing um, just ordinance with God and talking back and forth with him regarding how he uh, wants God to relate to the people and what, you know, the, how, for the people to have forgiveness and uh, 
just in all making sure that the people are communicating with God and God is communicating with them I, and I don't know why he would think that they wouldn't if he had told him to build the house he, he definitely were going to be there and he was definitely going to communicate with them so he started 25 here verse 25 he said then hear thou from the heavens and forgive forgive them of their sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gave to them and to their fathers so when the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou dost afflict them then hear from heaven O Lord and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel when thou hast taught them the good way wherein they shall walk and send rain upon thy land which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance now you see how he's praying for the people before they even go into services before that because they haven't had any services yet they just they just built the house they the foundation of it and they're getting ready to uh they're going to have service but they haven't had it yet and solomon is making a petition to the heavenly father regarding the uh, service and the ordinance and his commune with the people of Israel. So 28 says, If there be dearth in the land, if there be pestilence, and if there be blasting or mildew, locusts or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore or whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer or what supplication soever shall be made or any for any man or of all the people of Israel, when every one shall know his own sore and his own grief, and shall spread forth his hands in this house. Then hear, he said to God, please God, then hear from heaven, thy dwelling place, and forgive. Okay, he said, he, you know, I can't say that more enough either, because, you know, we want God to forgive us at all times. And that was uh, the petition that he was really going forward with. And then he says, And render unto every man according unto his ways, whose heart thou knows, for thou uh, only knows the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which thou gave unto your fathers. Now he also said up here in... Uh, verse uh, 30 he says then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways okay so even though God will forgive you he's going to still render unto you your way and that was what the prayer was for Solomon for the house of the Lord and it pretty much is uh, mm, somewhat today Whenever there is a, because he's talking about if there is a saint, we'll say because saints go in alignment with the children of Israel and from the Old Testament as being the children of inheritance. Saints are the people of inheritance of the God, of the Holy Ghost, and of heaven. So we have the same uh, relationship aspect with the Heavenly Father as they did. And so what he's saying right here is if they get in, off into a place of basically rebellion, just please forgive them, but just give them the way if they whatever they whatever they were doing, give them that back, recompense, you know, return that back to them so that they can see how that feels and learn why it's not good to do it. So he says uh, that they may fear you and to walk in the ways. In your way, so long as I, as they live in the land which thou gave unto our fathers, and then he goes on moreover concerning the stranger. Now he's talking about the stranger, those that are not a part of God's inheritance. He says, which is not of thy people Israel, okay, but is come from a far country, for thy great name's sake and thy mighty hand and thy stretched out arm. And if they come and pray in this house. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from the dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calls to thee, for that all people of the earth may know thy name, and fear thee, as does thy people Israel, and may know that, the, that this house which I have built is called by your name. 
So if thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them, and they pray unto thee toward this city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name, then hear, he's continually petitioning heaven, then hear from heaven, uh, hear from the heavens their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. For if they sin against you, O Lord, for there is no man which sins not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near. Now he's petitioning God for forgiveness for the saints of uh, for the children of Israel. Just as Christ Jesus does for us, sitting at the right hand of the throne, he petitions God for forgiveness for us and um, and always and already has been the intercessor for us. So that's uh, what we're taking a look at here as a sort of like a similarity to the relationship with God. Again, because in this chapter, we're looking at Solomon, who's this representing the spirit of the lord the holy spirit representing god and then we have the house we know that that's representation of the house that we become in the lord because we become the house of the lord because of the holy spirit and so now he's petitioning god okay regarding that house and what to allow and what not to allow in the house and how the house should be prepared and how it should be set up and how the congregation should come in and worship praise and worship him so let me finish the chapter here. It says, uh, so if they, because this is a great prayer that he's praying for them. And again, it just reminds you of the fact that because Jesus Christ is our intercessor, he does the same thing. And just as many of the leaders of the children of Israel in the Old Testament did, they did pray for the, the children of Israel, just like Moses, Aaron, and um, those that got uh, Joshua certain Old Testament leaders that God had placed over the children of Israel to lead them and guide them. They would continually pray for their uh, people, just like today, pastors pray for their flock. And, you know, they're responsible for the uh, teaching to their flock. Uh, and so that's what Solomon was doing right here. He was petitioning God on behalf of the children of Israel. So he says, verse 37, yet if they rethink if they bethink themselves in the land where they are carried captive and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity saying we have sinned we have done amiss and have dealt wickedly if they return to thee with all thy heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity where they have carried them captives and pray toward their land which thou gave unto their fathers and toward the city which thou hast chosen and toward the house which I have built for thy name Solomon says, then hear from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, hear their prayer and supplication and maintain their cause and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. And now, my God, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open and let thine ears be attentive unto the prayer that is made in this place. And now therefore arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place you and the ark of the strength let thy priests O lord god be clothed with salvation and let thy saints rejoice in goodness O lord god turn not away thy face of thine anointed and remember the mercies of david thy servant hallelujah praise jesus all right so that is going to bring us to the conclusion of this uh, chapter two of uh, chapter six second chronicles bible study uh where david basically not david i don't want to keep saying him this is david's son solomon has built the house and did the dedication and petitioned god regarding the house for the children of israel and again just as those leaders that god places in uh positions of leadership over the children of israel they continually pray on behalf of the of the kingdom because they're intercessors okay in jesus christ's mighty name we thank you holy father for intercessory in the mighty name christ jesus thank you heavenly father for all who pray for us who you have called to be intercessors to speak on behalf of us in the mighty name of christ jesus and sent up to the heavens and we 
thank you and praise you for it, Heavenly Father. Amen. All right, God bless you, and I look forward to studying with you again as we continue to go forward on the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study Video Channel.